Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to talk about my March wrap-up. So I'm going to talk about the books that I read, the books that I'm currently reading and also the movies and TV series that I saw this month. Beginning with the books that I read. I read The Gambler by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I made a video about it, I'll put it in the cards and also in the description down below. So if you're interested to hear a bit more about this book and my um, critics and my takeaway of this book, you can uh, go and watch that video. This talks about um, a professor, a home professor, Alexei, and he's uh, currently he's in Rolentenburg with the a general family that's for for whom he works, and he's in love with Paulina, that is the stepdaughter of this general. And they have a bit of a toxic relationship. And this book involves gambling, as the title implies. So I'm not going to elongate a lot because I made a video about it. So there's no need for it. If you're interested, go watch that video. But it talks about gambling and how love sometimes is not reciprocated in the ways that we hope for uh, and about you know people being interested in other people for not the great reasons and also the addiction of gambling is really hard to overcome this is a autobiographical book as well Dostoevsky had a problem with gambling and in a way this is a portrayal of his own problem and he he, in here he makes critics about the European type of life and how the Russian people, uh, at least uh, the rich ones, were trying to imitate um, the the um, lifestyle of European other Europeans, and how he thought that was ridiculous the way of talking, the way of moving, the way of dressing, and so on. And he thought that it was ridiculous. And he also made critics of the French people, the English people. So it's a portrayal of a broad spectrum of issues. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Well, uh, I didn't like this book very much. I didn't connect with the characters. Uh, it was difficult for me to um, to connect with them, to um, feel that in some way I was I didn't become uh, moved by the, by the characters. So that was a difficult thing for me. So that's why I didn't like this book so so much. But, you know, I didn't hate it, so it was an okay book for me. So, yeah. Then I read Dangerous Liaisons by Coderlo de la Clos. This is a French author. And I also made a video about this book. I'll link it in, here in the cards and down below in the description. I love this book. This is an epistolary novel. Uh, so it's a novel written in letters. So um, for my experience, I didn't, I don't enjoy very much epistolary novels because I read Dracula and what was the other one? I don't remember. Damn it. Well, but I didn't enjoy it so much. But in this book, on the contrary, I loved it. So uh, this is um, a book about two characters, principal characters. It's about 
uh, more than two, but principally two characters, Madame de Mertil and Vicomte de Valmont. And they are friends and they are rich, so they don't have to work to sustain themselves. And they have a um, very peculiar relationship because they both like manipulation games, power games, um, and they come together to a depraved objective. So, Madame de Mertil, or the Marquise de Mertil, um, has an ex lover who left her, and he, he is now trying to marry a virginal young girl, Cecile de Volange, that, is, that was uh, raised in a convent, had an education in a convent, and she is friends with her mother, Madame de Volange, and Cecile as well. And she is trying to stain that marriage. So she asks Vicomte de Valmont to seduce Cecile. You know, it has um, a bit more of a plot between what I'm saying, but you have to read it to, to know. In a summarize, she asks Vicomte de Valmont to seduce Cecile. So she comes to her marriage not a virgin. So it's a way so she can have a revenge on her ex-lover because he left her. And at the same time, Vicomte Valmont has his own plans. He is trying, he is thinking of seducing uh, Madame de Tourvelle, that is a woman that is married, that is known for her respectability, her charity, her devotion to God. So he's trying to seduce a moral person to do an immoral thing, you know? So it's a challenge for him. And he, because he is known to be a seductor, a ladies' man, a bon vivant. And so he has a very long reputation, if you know what I mean. And he's very proud of that reputation. And he makes a point to defend that said reputation. So this a challenge that he is imposing himself, it's like um, he's a cherry on top, you know? So what I can say is that it doesn't end up well to any character. So it's not a book that has a happy ending. But it's really interesting to, um, uh, through the letters, figure out what is going on and what ends up happening because the end that these two main characters want to um, want to find to their challenges end up not being uh, quite the way that they thought of so it's really interesting to figure out what ends up really happening. Some things they achieve, I can say that, but other things, you know, it, it, it doesn't end up the way that they thought of. But it doesn't end, end well to anyone, so it's kind of a sad story, really. But, um, ah, another thing, I really uh, loved re-watching the movie, The Dangerous Liaisons, it has the same name, from 1988. It is a wonderful movie, it has this cast, Glenn Close, John Malkovich and Michelle Pfeiffer. So, Glenn Close is the Marquise de Mertil, 
John Malkovich is Vicomte de Beaumont and Michelle Pfeiffer is the Madame de Tourvelle. So they are perfect for the roles. They are impeccable. The way that they portray the personalities of these three characters are impressive. It's a wonderful movie. I really advise you to go and watch it. If you're interested, read the book and watch the movie. Because, you know, something that I have to say, of course, this, this book is in letters, so the characters don't really... Don't, they never end up to meet each other in person through the story, right? Because it's in letters. In the movie, um, the meet in person is very much often. So, you know, so you, no one would make the movie reading letters, right? So they have to meet in person a lot. Uh, but the story is very, very faithful to the book. And the way that they can portray the little facial expressions, the, um, John Malkovich, I think, is perfect in that. I love his portrayal of Vicon de Beaumont <sighs> because he makes so many facial expressions, so sub subtle but so important and significant. Significant. It's it's really wonderful. I really advise you to go and watch that movie. I really loved it and I love the book. So you have here my recommendation. So yeah. So now the book that I'm currently reading. I'm going to uh, fix here the books that are in standby. I made this in my last wrap up. These are the books that uh, I said movies? No. Books? Books. These are the books that uh, are in standby for now. Uh, and now the books that I'm currently reading. I'm still reading The Brothers Karamazov. Still now, as I have said before, I'm not enjoying it so much. It's really dense, really intricate and sometimes really difficult to read, I have to say. So I'm not enjoying very much the story at all. It's uh, being a really difficult read for me. I don't know how it's going to be... I don't know how it's going to be uh, forward. But... I can say that I'm not enjoying it very much. So, there you go. I'm still reading Anna Karnina by Leo Tolstoy. I'm enjoying a bit more of this reading. I, in the previous wrap-up, I've said that I was a bit uh, like uh, hot and cold with this book. But right now I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the plot, um, but still it's a bit slow. The book is slow paced, so it has a bit of um, dragged moments and situations. So, you know, sometimes I have to confess, I'm a bit bored, but still. I'm enjoying the plot and I'm enjoying the dialogues between characters. So it's being uh, more pleasurable to read than the Brothers Karamazov. I can say that. Then I'm also reading Life and Fate by Vasily Grossman. I'm still in the, the beginning. So as you can see, this is a chunky one. And I'm on page... 40. So I didn't read so much, but I'm quite enjoying it. Uh, I love the writing. It's really fluid and easy to read. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm not going to elaborate a lot about these books because I'm planning to do a video about, about them, to each of the books that I talk about. Uh, so I'm 
just here to say if I'm enjoying them or not. So now about the movies that I saw. Uh, I rewatched Frankie and Johnny. This is a movie that came out in this is a movie that came out in 1991. So it came out a year earlier than my birthday. So it's an oldie one, we can say that. I'm not considering me myself old, but you know. <laughs> it's with uh, Al Pacino and um, Michelle Pfeiffer. And it's about um, a woman that works in a cafeteria and the man that just came out of prison and is trying to... and he was a cook in prison and he's trying to um, get a job as a cook as well and he goes and tries to get a job at the cafeteria of uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, the character of Michelle Pfeiffer, that is Frankie and he gets the job so he goes and works there and he begins to flirt with uh, Frankie and then it's all about their relationship and how their relationship relationship develops and it's it's really interesting this movie because they don't have an easy relationship you know it's um, she has a past and he also has a past so they are troubled people trying to meet each other in between so is a really beautiful movie and I love those actors they are one of my favorites I love Michelle Pfeiffer and I love Al Pacino they are really good in the roles that they portray and it's you know they are simple people you know they are common people they could be anyone so it's really interesting because of that so i really advise you to go and watch this movie if you haven't watched it already it's an oldie but it's a good one then i saw licorice pizza um this is a movie that was a surprise in a way because i didn't know exactly what to expect of this movie but uh, it was also really interesting so this is a movie about a teenager uh, gary gary valentine i think that's how it's called he's called um and about alana uh, 25 so she, he is like between 16, 17 years old and she has like 25 and uh, he's still in high school and the movie begins with um, uh, Gary in a line of people, other students that are going to take a picture for the book year, I think that's how we call it. Uh, and Alana is working for the photographer so she's with a mirror and a comb uh, going through the line to anyone who wants to you know put themselves together and he sees her and already begins to talk to her and flirt with her so it's really interesting um, and then we uh, the movie explores their relationship and how, you know, she's a bit older than him and she sees him like a little boy. But she uh, soon finds out that he's very mature for his age because it's like he's an entrepreneur. So he makes, um, he begins uh, very businesses like with mattresses, with uh, water mattresses, and so on. Uh, and <laughs> that they 
then um, happens some situations in the movie that are really funny um, and it's really interesting it's so the movie it's all about their relationship and how they are dog and cat in a way and how he's trying to seduce her and trying for her to become her his girlfriend uh, and she doesn't want to but she uh, still works with him and helps him and so on and it's really interesting so i really love this movie it's a cutie and the the actors are really impeccable i'm um, really surprised by them so i really advise you to go and watch this one too then I, I tried to see, I didn't finish, I tried to see West Side Story. So I maybe saw 10 minutes of the, this movie. I didn't know it was a musical, so you to have an idea. I went to this movie knowing nothing about it. And in the beginning I liked because I love dancing. I love dancers. And anything related to that, I think um, dancers are incredible. I saw something once that said something about dancers. What was it? That dancers are poetry, something like that. So, and I really agree with that. I think dance is a um, magnificent sport. And um, so when they began to dance, I was really enjoying it. But then they began to sing. <sighs> and when they started it, that was it for me. Because I don't know, I can't really explain why. But I was really done with the movie. Like, no, I can't stand it. So if you have watched it, is it worth it? Should I give it another try and stick with it? Let me know. Please let me know in the comments what you thought. And if you think that West Side Story is a movie to, to see. Let me know. So then I saw Deep Water. This is a movie with um, Ben Affleck and an actress that I don't remember the name. Um, and I really like her. So this is an Amazon movie, I think, uh, and I didn't like it. So I think it's based, I think, no, I know it's based in a book, uh, Deep Water, right? I think that's how it's called, by Pat Patricia Highsmith. And the reviews that I saw about this book um, told, uh, were, were saying that they didn't like they didn't like the the book it was really confusing and the plot in itself wasn't uh, captivating so just by that i was a bit you know uh, in doubt if i was to going to like the movie and i didn't um, so it's about a couple that has a son, a daughter, and she she has many male male friends. The the woman, um, and it's a bit unclear if she really betrays the husband with those men, but we think she does. And he, the husband, begins to um, not really being conform because it's supposed to be something that he knows about and he accepts, you know. But the movie, um, in the movie, we become to understand that he perhaps is not very understanding at all of that. 
and some strange things began to happen. Um, but you know, I don't know, I didn't really enjoy the acting, um, I didn't really enjoy the plot in itself, so yeah, it was an okay movie for me. Then I watched Dangerous Liaisons, as I talk about. I love this one. This was also a rewatch for me. I have already seen the movie. And I love the first time and I love this uh, second time that I, that I watch it. Um, I really advise you to go and see it. It's wonderful. As I've said, the, um, the actors are perfect for the roles and they are impeccable. So it's a perfect movie. Go and watch it. Then I saw The Hating Game, so this is a, a romantic movie, a comedy romantic. It's based also on a, a book that I read and I enjoyed it, you know, it's a romance book and it was, it was cute, I, it was fun and entertaining, um, so it wasn't wonderful or anything, but it was good. And that's what I thought about the movie too. It's really a, cu a cutie one. It's, you know, for you to have a good time. And don't really think about the plot or anything. It's just for you to have fun and laugh a bit. And the actors are, um, I think they were really well chosen for the role. Um, so this is a, a, the story is about um, a man and a woman who are working in a publishing uh, house that it, 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 it was a mashup. So she was from a publishing house, she, he was from another, but they join in a fusion and they now are the same one, you know, one publishing house uh, and so they have to work with each other and they can't stand each other so it's enemies to lovers, you know so it's about their relationship their relationship in work their, their relationship out of work and how that entails so it's, it's a cutie, it's really fun and if you want to pass a good time and have a laugh with nothing pretentious about it, you go and watch it. Then I tried to see Marry Me. I know, I know, don't judge me, okay? This is also, uh, I, I love romantic comedies, okay? So don't judge me. This is with Jennifer Lopez. I love Jennifer. So I, when she comes out with a movie, I go and watch it. And that's what I intend to do with this one. But, you know, it wasn't for me. The, um, so the movie is about a singer who is going to marry another singer. Uh, and they will do their marriage in front of millions of people. So they are going to stream their marriage, their wedding, um, for millions. And she, uh, um, in the day of her wedding, she found, found out that the, her boyfriend is cheating on her. And she goes to the stage and she is heartbroken and she simply chooses a guy in the audience to marry her. And so the story is about that. And the, the man, he's a simple man, he's a professor, he has, he's divorced, he has a daughter and he goes with a daughter and a friend to that concert to that wedding, right? And he's caught, caught up on that and he goes to the stage and marries the singer and, you know, then he has to do press about it. So
so they make a deal so he he's available to do press and other stuff and so they meet up a lot they talk they you know it's then the development of their relationship as well but you know for me i tried to but i stopped because i i wasn't the handling at all it was a bit too cheesy for me and i have to stop so there you go then about the series that i watched i watched a very british scandal this is a mini series of uh, three episodes this is about the the 50s maybe I think in England and this is about a woman who marries a general but he was already married so he had to get a, a divorce so he could marry her because she also got a divorce so you know and they marry and he has um, a chateau like a house in he has like a really big mansion in the countryside and um, she goes there and with her her father's money she renovates that mansion so the, the father banks her and because she, you know she doesn't have to work she's rich as well because of, of her father money and um, he banks that renovation and you know then something happens because he has kids and so the mansion when he will die would be f for his uh, son right and then she begins to wonder what would happen with her and perhaps the most likely would be that she would be expelled for, for, from that mansion so because of that she does something that makes a doubt in his mind in the general mind about the, his, his sons are really his sons and she does a lot of things and so their relationship becomes to um, broken up they fight a lot he sometimes beats her uh, he's violent with her so they end up trying to divorce each other and so it, it begins a trial uh, with a divorce and then it becomes a scandal because the things that the general brings to the table so he uh, stains he, her image is unthinkable so he says that she has a lot of lovers that um, she betrayed him with a lot of people she still he steals her diaries for you to imagine he steals the diaries uh, he shows a picture of her uh, with a man having a sexual act, act and they are trying to find out who that man is and she in the beginning says that uh, the man he is the general but then they um, they bring um, specialists in pubic hairs so he can make an analysis of if the pubic hairs match the pubic hairs of the general so it's so strange and then it, it is proven that the man is not him and then they try to find out then after all who who he is and she doesn't say and so her 
her whole life, you know, is turned public in that trial. And he tries to... Um, he's really low, right? And she goes on a stand and they interrogate her and she breaks and she admits that the man he, he on the picture isn't him and so on and so forth and so this woman was you know publicly shamed and she was also banking the um, pro uh, project of this general because he was a general from the marine uh, and he was trying to fi found uh, to find a treasure um, on a, sh uh, uh, a sink chi ship and who was banking that her father she was investing money in this man and then uh, in the divorce he was just humiliating her so it was it it is really a really interesting series for you to watch um it is based on a real story so this really happened and it's so interesting the portrayal of the woman in that time and how uh, the sexual life of women were seen and how that was um, a cause to uh, shame a woman for her sexual life. So it is really interesting and I really advise you to go and watch it. Then I saw The Ozarks season 4. I love this series. I think this is um, a so clever and so well thought series. So this is a, a series about a couple who has two kids and the man is working for a drug cartel, a Mexican drug cartel, I think. So in the beginning of the series, he, this man has a partner and the, the leader of the cartel is accusing them of stealing money and he kills his partner and other people but um, our main character our main character is able to persuade the drug cartel leader to not kill him because he has a plan to make a lot of money for him and uh, he accepts that plan and imposes some rules of course and they move to Ozark and there they uh, begin a new life and they begin new businesses with casinos and so on uh, and they have to launder money for this uh, drug cartel and so then there they have to deal with um, heroin mafia and other families that get involved in the businesses of our main family so it's really interesting and this story is really peculiar if you think about it and it has many layers and uh, in this um, season we accompany our main characters trying to get out of the um, of the wing of the lawyer of the drug cartel and they achieve that but you know it comes with a price and the kids uh, know about the, um, the 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 deals with the drug cartel and they they are in on it and you know is um the sun begins to work for another people uh, laundering money as well because he's really intelligent and he can do already what his father can do so you know it's mind-blowing really it's so 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 interesting 
and so fun and it's something is always happening and they have to solve so many problems and it's one after another and it's quite fun so I really advise you to go and see this one then I tried to watch uh, Shining Valley I saw the first episode so this is supposed to be a um, dark comedy show uh, you know it's it was fun but uh, it was okay I didn't thought it was that spectacular it's uh, suppose it's they move to another house in another city and the house is haunted and the woman of the couple begins to see people outside and so on and so forth and you know it's a, a bit cliche so yeah then i saw euphoria season two uh, I love this series. This is a series about a girl who has a drug addiction. She is a teenager and he's, the show is about her life and her friends' lives. So it's, it has a lot happening and it's also about um, transgender people. Um, it has uh, a diverse uh, base of characters um, yeah, I think diversity is the word for this show and uh, it's really I really enjoyed it it's with Zendaya I think she's um, really really well in this character she's our main character and I think she, portray, she portrays our character uh, really well. So I really enjoy seeing her. And he has a lot of other actors that I also really enjoy watching. I think they are all perfect for the roles they are in. Uh, and I think the plot in itself, it's really well structured and well developed. So... If you're interested in this type of theme, go and watch it. So, finally we get to the end. This is my uh, March wrap-up. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Leave a like, it helps us a lot with the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And yeah, I think that's it. I hope you have enjoyed it.